What's up, Pinedale kids? I am so excited that you are joining us for Church at Home today. Today, we are, we are nearing the end of our series on miracles. I want you to go grab your Bible, open up to John chapter 2. That's where our Bible story is going to start, but today we are going to be all over the page. First, let's do this worship song. Hey guys, for prayer time today, we're going to talk about how Jesus may want us to do something before he works the miracle in our lives. Sean's going to be talking about a hodgepodge of miracles today, and the overarching theme is going to be that sometimes Jesus asks us to do something before he does the miracle. He wants us to do something that demonstrates our faith. So what exactly is it that you are asking God to do in your life? Is it something that um, maybe he's asking you to do something first? Maybe you need to talk to someone, say a word, uh, do something that demonstrates your faith, that you believe that God can work this miracle in your life. Well, we're going to take time today to ask him about that and to pray about it. To give, ask him to give us the courage and the strength to do whatever it is that he wants from us. I remember a time a long time ago when I had to make a decision. And that decision made a huge difference in what was going to happen in my life from that point forward. I could play the piano for our church. 
or I could continue to lead kids church. Well, I think you know what I did. And I've been able to do both over the years. God, it was a hard decision, but it was confirmation from God after I did make that decision of what He wanted me to do because He has worked a miracle in my life. This is not something that I have training for. It's just something that God has equipped me for. So, what is it that God is asking you to do? Ask Him about that now and pray that He'll give you the courage to do whatever it is that you need to do and to make whatever decision it is you need to make in order to do what He wants you to do. Dear God, we thank you so much for the opportunity to demonstrate our faith, however that may look for each one of us. It's going to look different in each one of our lives, and I pray that you would speak to each one listening and watching right now. I pray that you would speak to their heart, make it clear to them what it is that you're asking them to do, and then give us the courage to do it. God, I thank you for the miracles you work in our lives for those everyday things that maybe we don't recognize or see. And I pray that you would continue to work those miracles in our lives. Help us to see them, open our eyes and our hearts to what you are doing around us. And I pray for each one. I pray for each need, for those who need healing, for those who need comfort. And Lord, I pray that you would reach each one of us right where we are, meet us where we are, and lead us by your Spirit. We love you so much. It's in Jesus' name I pray. And all God's kids said, Amen. I like the Carolina Panthers. I do. It's about to be football season and I love watching football. If I were to just say this, I like the Carolina Panthers, would you believe me? Chances are you're going to say yes because, um, well, Sean, you're a preacher and you're not supposed to lie. Um, you said it, so I'm just going to choose to believe you. But is there room for doubt? Sure there is, because I'm not really putting any action with that. But if I were to say, I like the Carolina Panthers, and then I invite you to come over to my house, and we walk into my family room, and you see that I've got my room painted in teal colors, which is the same color as the Panthers, and I've got on one wall, I've got a picture, or like their logo written on it, it says Carolina Panthers, and I've got Purr, their mascot, in a glass case over here, and I've got um, helmets that are signed, and footballs, and jerseys, and trading cards, and you look over, and Sir Purr, their mascot, is in a glass case in the corner. He's like, let me out, he kidnapped me! And then I said, I like the Carolina Panthers. Would you believe me now? Yeah, you'd look at that and go, yeah, I know that you like the Carolina Panthers. I can see it by everything that's going on in the room. My actions are demonstrating what I am saying. Today, we're not going to look at a miracle. Instead, we're going to look at a lot of different miracles. But I want to point out something in those miracles. That out of the 33 miracles that Jesus performed, the vast majority of them, I think it's like 24 of them or 26 of them, Jesus asked for some kind of demonstration of their faith. Okay? Now, I want to keep that in mind because at the end of this, what I want to talk about is our faith and our 
um, walk with Jesus, okay? So you're in John chapter 2, and um, this is the very first miracle that Jesus performed, okay? Now, we're not going to actually look up all these different verses uh, or all these different miracles. Um, so just kind of thumb through the book of John as I'm, I'm telling you these, or you can go through Mark and just kind of remember the stories that I've already told you, okay? In John chapter 2, the very first miracle, there's a moment where Jesus says, all right, go get these jars, fill them up with water. They come over, they set down the water, and Jesus says, now draw out some water. So they take a cup and do this, and it's got water in it. He says, now take it to the master of the ceremonies. Remember when we talked about this miracle, I told you that what's scary is these servants, if they take water to the master of the ceremony and he is their owner, okay, they're slaves, they work for him, not slaves like we know with the slaves of America. No, slaves in the Bible were a lot different than what we experience here in America. But they, they take it to him and if they were to take water when he told them he wanted wine, He's going to get mad, and he's going to punish them. I mean, he might even kill them, but they obeyed anyhow. The servants demonstrated their faith in Jesus by obeying. Another miracle was the blind man that Jesus wiped mud on his eyes. Remember how, when we tell you the story, how I said, you know how gross that would be? If, if somebody wiped mud on my face, I'd be like, oh, oh, get that off of me, no. And then wipe it off and be like, all right, Jesus, can you heal me? Can you give me my sight back? If the blind man had done that, would he have been able to see? We don't know. Chances are the answer is probably no. But because he obeyed and he went to the pool and he washed, it off, he was able to get his sight back. Did the water give him his sight back? No. Was it the mud, the dirt, the spit that gave him his sight back? No. What gave him his sight back? Jesus gave him his sight back. There's another story that we talked about, the ten lepers. Lepers. Not lepers. That would be an animal. The ten men with leprosy. Remember where they were? They were outside the village. Remember I told you how they weren't allowed to be in the city. If they were, the people would drive them out or they would throw rocks at them to get them out because leprosy was so contagious. But they were outside the city. Jesus says to the 10 lepers, you want to be healed? Go, you sh go, so, go show yourself to the priest. There was a section that we skipped over. I want to talk about that section now. The priest is going to be in the temple. Where is the temple? It's going to be downtown Main Street of this village. So the guys with leprosy had to go inside the city. But here's what I didn't tell you. If you were seen inside the city, the people would be like, whoa, 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 you've got leprosy. Get out of here. Get out of here. Go, go, go. They're not going to walk up to him and go, hey, excuse me, tap, tap, tap on your shoulder. I need you to leave the city because you're sick and you might be contagious and you'll make all of us sick. No, what the people would do is they'd say, oh, look at that guy over there with leprosy. And they'll pick up a rock and they would throw rocks at him. If they didn't leave, they would keep throwing rocks at him and end up stoning them to death. Then they would keep throwing rocks on him till their whole entire body was covered in rocks. That way, nobody would mess with the dead body and thus get leprosy. So when Jesus told them, I want you to go in and show yourself to the priest, and they did so, they had to go in there knowing that if anyone sees me, I run the risk of being killed, yet they still did it. You see, when Jesus gives us a command, sometimes he gives us a command that sounds really, really scary, but we need to demonstrate our faith and be obedient. There was one miracle that we didn't talk about. It was a man who had a withered up hand, and all right, so it's all crippled, and he kept it inside of his cloak so you couldn't see it. Because if people saw it, they'd be like, oh, get away, drive him out, get out of our city, you can't be in here, there's something wrong with you, and, then, and it might be contagious, and I might get it, and then my hand will all withered up, wither up. And Jesus says to the man, stretch forth your hand. 
we always read the story and the end it says the man stretched forth his hand and but as he did he saw that he had been healed we read that and we go yeah i'd do that same thing but would we would we really do something like that jesus tells us to take a stand for him but we go to school and we don't take a stand for him why because we know that if we do we run the risk of being made fun of by our peers being exiled from the from our from our school not being like necessarily kicked out of it but nobody would want to hang out with us nobody would want to talk to us we would be so alone and so we go oh i'm not going to do that we don't take a stand when somebody's doing something wrong we don't stand up for jesus and go hey stop that if somebody takes jesus name in vain we don't go hey 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 don't take my father's name in vain why don't we do that because we're scared you think this man with the withered hand was brave no i think he was scared just like you and i are if he took jesus at his word and he demonstrated his faith by stretching it out and that's when he saw the miracle did he know what was going to happen to him? Nope, he did not. Do you know what will happen to you when you demonstrate your faith in Jesus? Nope, you do not. There's a woman who had been bleeding for many, many years. And she tried to get into Jesus, but there was this big crowd and she couldn't get to him. And she thought, if I could just touch the hem of his garment, that'd be like the bottom part of his robe. If I could just touch it, then I'll be healed. So she fights through the crowd. She gets up there and she falls down on the ground. She crawls along on the ground. And we think, we read this like, did she really crawl on the ground? She touched the hem, which is the bottom of it. So where is she? She's on the ground. So she's not standing up. She's down on the ground. She crawls between some legs. She stretches up and she had to like weave through some guy's legs. And she got up there and she goes, touch. And they keep pushing through. And Jesus like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Second. Stop, 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 stop. Power has left me. Somebody has touched me. I'm like, well, of course people touch you. There's this big crowd all around you. Jesus says, no, somebody touched me because I felt the power go out of me. And this crowd spreads apart. And there's this woman on the ground. She's like, it was me. And he said, your faith has made you well. See, she demonstrated her faith by touching him. One of the miracles we talked about were these group of men who had a paralyzed friend and they carried him to Jesus, carried by four of them, but there were others. They couldn't get to Jesus, so they cut a hole in the roof and they lowered him down. And remember what Jesus said? Your sins are forgiven. And the Pharisees are like, wait, what? You can't forgive sins? And he goes, all right, what's easier, to forgive sins or to perform a miracle? Yeah, to forgive sins is, but just so you'll know that I'm the son of God, I'm gonna perform a miracle. Hey, get up and walk. And it says that Jesus saw their faith. How did he see it? He saw it because they were demonstrating their faith. In our lives, Jesus wants us to demonstrate our faith. There are some kids who want to get baptized so they can go to heaven. Newsflash. Getting baptized does not send you to heaven. It does not. Baptism just gets you wet, okay? Now, it does more than just that. But if you're thinking, oh, I'm gonna get baptized so I can go to heaven, then you're just a wet sinner is all you are. The only way to get to heaven is to believe in Jesus. I wanna show you a whole bunch of really cool verses. Let's start in John chapter three. In verse 16, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him will not perish, means die, be separated from God, but will have eternal life. Eternal life means you're together with Jesus. Where is Jesus? In heaven. That means eternal life means you're going to heaven. But I want you to get this. It says, He who believes has eternal life. Then, let's look at 
back up and look at verse 15. It says in verse 15, for everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. How do we get to heaven? By believing in Jesus. Verse 18, but whoever believes in him is not condemned, means they're separated from God, but whoever does not believe stands condemned. So in other words, the only way to get to heaven is to believe in Jesus. Let's look at um, verse 36. Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life. That's the only way to get to heaven. Believe in Jesus. Notice I'm just turning pages. John chapter 5, verse 24. I tell you the truth. Whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life. Turn the page again. Uh, let's read John chapter 6, verse 40. For my Father's will is that everyone who looks to the Son and believes in Him shall have eternal life. On the next page, verse 47, I tell you the truth, he who believes has eternal life. Let's turn the page again, and we'll look at John chapter 7, verse 38. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture says, streams of living water will flow from within him. Living water meaning eternal life, meaning heaven. You want to go to heaven? The only way to heaven is to believe in Jesus. Let's go over to John chapter 8, verse 24. I told you that you would die in your sins if you do not believe. So that is kind of the opposite, all right? If you believe, you have eternal life. If you don't believe, you'll die, meaning be separated from God. Let me turn the next page. Um, in chapter 10, Verse 9, it says, I am the gate. Whoever enters through me, how do you go through him? By believing in him, will be saved. Um, on the next page, John chapter 10, verse 28, I give them eternal life and they will not perish. Who gives them eternal life? Jesus does. You know, I can just keep turning page after page. Here it is again. He who believes in me will live even though he dies. I can just keep turning page after page after page, and we're going to see that that's what the Bible teaches, is that if you want to go to heaven, you have to believe in Jesus. That's the only way to get to heaven. So, let me quiz you. Will going to church get you to heaven? Nope. What is the only way to get to heaven? Believe in Jesus. Will reading your Bible and singing praise and worship songs get you to heaven? The answer is no. The only way to get to heaven is to believe in Jesus. Will doing XL, will memorizing scripture, will inviting your friends to come to church, will tithing get you to heaven? Nope, 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 nope. The only way to get to heaven is to believe in Jesus. Will getting baptized get you to heaven? No. The only way to get to heaven is to believe in Jesus. So wait a minute. So we don't have to do any of those things and we can go to heaven? Correct. Uh, kind of. See, when Jesus performed a miracle, he oftentimes asked for some demonstration of their faith. If you believe in Jesus, then that means you have faith in him. I want you to see this verse. John chapter 14 verse 15. It says this, if you love me, you will obey what I command. You know all those things I mentioned? Going to church, reading your Bible, praying, worshiping him, and doing evangelism, tithing, getting baptized, are all commands that Jesus gives us. Here it says, if you love me, you will obey what I command. We do those things not so that we can go to heaven. We do them so that we can demonstrate our love for Jesus. But you know what? Jesus doesn't just say it one time right there. We we'll skip down to verse 21. He says, whoever has my commands and obeys them, he is the one who loves me. He who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love him and show myself to him. And then again, in verse 23, he says it again. Jesus replied, 
If anyone loves me, he will obey my teaching. Three times in this in this space that big, okay, which is two paragraphs, but really in the original Greek, it's one paragraph. Three times Jesus says, if you love me, you will obey what I command. Today we're not showing you a, a, a video. We're not showing you a hey-ho video. We're not showing a cartoon summary of some miracle. Instead, we're just gonna talk about all miracles. And the way God works in our life is he wants us to demonstrate our faith. If you wanna see miracles happen in your life, You've got to demonstrate your faith. Jesus gives us commands, and like a lot of the stories in the Bible, he gave them commands. And when we read it, it's like, oh, I know the end of the story, so it's really easy for me to see them doing that action. But in reality, it's probably really hard for them to do that. Jesus doesn't give us easy things to do. He gives us hard things to do. Things that are either black or white, like, oh, I either do them or I don't do them. In the Bible, they did them and saw a miracle. My encouragement for you this week, demonstrate your faith. You might see a miracle happen at the end of it. Never, ever did the, the people in the Bible know what was going to happen in their miracle. You don't know what miracle is going to happen in your life. So let's go find out. I love you guys. Bye-bye.